Welcome back. You are listening and or watching Pwncast. This is episode 33, and we are in Warlords of Draenor. I am your very, very, very grumpy warlock host, Bell, but I'm going to put all that aside uh, for the show. I did also bring the writers of Rohan with me. Um, I'm shocked they're still alive because we might have almost killed each other earlier, uh, but we're, <laughs> we're all still here. I did bring the mage that gave up his berserk for a trinket. Uh, for I, Isa. <laughs> I did. It is uh, so not worth it. I love the berserker for my troll. I think it was a great thing for a burst, uh, even if it's a three-minute cooldown. Uh, I traded it for every man for himself, and I, it's, it's so sad, but I, it comes in handy. It comes in handy, so... It was a good switch off in many ways, so I'm happy I did that. Awesome. Or not happy, but... Well, and you're human, content. right? I'm content. No, are That's you human for your, your mage, right? Yeah. Human males are ugly to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he, he always wanted an extra They're trinket. just a little ugly to me. I did. As, as, a, as a mage... Your night elf was hot, and I don't mind your troll. Your troll's kind of hot, too, even though I don't like horde. But the, the horde looked really badass, like... The trolls look yeah, really cool. The, the trolls pretty badass. I also brought the sh- the shaman who dance who dances for epoxy crystals, uh, spam burger. <laughs> if that's all it takes to get some epoxy crystals, I'll dance all I'll dance all night. Give me those g strings. <laughs> I think for spam it might be a t string. I don't really know. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know what a t string is. I don't either. That's why it's a mystery. Uh, <laughs> Well, a T doesn't fully wrap around and connect, so you do the math on, on what you feel that... Uh... I'm wearing a T-shirt. I don't know. I think we were in a raid, and we were talking about thongs while we were, we were fighting a boss. We were, and I, I, think thought, I, I didn't know what you were talking about then either. I think, I think we said if I was to wear a thong, I would lose it halfway during the day somewhere. I, mean, <laughs> I didn't know, know what it meant. Whether it got absorbed into other various uh, pieces and parts, we're not really sure what would occur at that moment. Uh, <laughs> Maybe it was the underpants gnomes. Anybody that's a South Park fan knows what that's in reference to. Um, <laughs> we did also bring the Death Knight who death grips Frizo's mom. Uh, <laughs> there like you it. go. Let's get personal. Let's get personal. <laughs> I, I have to say, Frizo has been very a very good sport about this because I've been doing nothing but picking on him for the last two weeks running heroics. Every time we go in heroic, and I think we talked a little bit about this last week. I'm like, yeah, just blame him, Mage. It's Mage's so, fault. So it's, it's so hard to be to be Lycan's friend because you want him to be your tank because you want to get into... He's going to keep you alive and he's going to keep you... He's going to get your queue time to zero seconds. But when you're in there, he's going to do his best to get you kicked out of there. <laughs> the hardest you can think, man, this mage sucks. Oh, man, this mage has no damage. Wow, he tells me all kinds of bad advice. Before. And they're like, it, well, what's wrong with It's funny, him? though, because the other people in the group realize that you guys have, like, Riders of Rohan written over your head. I, so. I'm still waiting for the day that I get booted out of there, and I'm just going to be, I'm going to rage clear. I'm, I'm close. Here. I'm close. Like it if if they did a vote to kick him, would you kick him? Oh, probably. <laughs> that, the bad part is I can't think about it. That would be so horrible. It wouldn't matter. It just takes three people to do it. He would so rage quit. I can't even stand how funny that is. Um, I can't even stand how funny that is. Let's get right into the news because we have a lot of really cool stuff um, going on on the show today, including an awesome um, lore section. So Dark Moon Fair is happening. Now's the time to get your heirlooms, uh, heirlooms, heirlooms, looms, BOAs. I don't even know. There's a different group of people calls them something different every day. So at the end of the day, uh, I don't know what you want to call them. So now's the time to get them because they are located inside. There's specific pets. There's special toys. There's all kinds of stuff happening inside the Dark Moon Fair. Really, it's not my fancy. Um... I don't really fancy the Dark Moon Fair, but I do know that Lycan loves it. Uh, I don't know that Fryza loves it. I don't even know if Fryza goes to the Dark Moon Fair. I've only raided it. <laughs> I, have, I, have raided it. <laughs> I absolutely love the pets. They get, and, and, and this has become my new addiction again. I'm up to like 530 unique pets with like 90 of them at, 100, at level 25. It's, Nobody got time for that. Yeah. yeah. I, I need to start going to meetings. It's it's that bad. And I'm back in her. I already got the squid, but I want another one of them. They're so badass. Ugh. So make sure you go there. Um, also, I wanted to talk about the World of Warcraft public event. 
those of you that have been following the show and who've been following the page and the website, you already know that Pwncast has always been a huge supporter of Rathamus and what he's doing over at the first World of Warcraft public event. When Rathamus first came to the show, it was probably our fifth or sixth episode. We were little guys, and so was he at the time. I think he maybe had a couple, maybe at the time it was like three or 400 users on. Now, um, in addition to their daily count being 5,500 5, on average, and that's not all logged in at once. That's a cumulative um, a cumulative IPs or however, however he does it um, a day. Last night, they hit a world record for the most people in a public event. Uh, or in event in general, 995 people all on at once. This is a huge thing for Rathamus. Most of you don't know that when he started the World of Warcraft too, public yeah. event, he used to do it on his own. He paid out of pocket. He It was all his blood, sweat, and tears. Now Typefrag has actually seen what the work he's doing with bringing players together on a global level. We're talking global. This isn't a Facebook group, ladies and gentlemen. This is you get free access to a public event with thousands of other people that are raiding, PvPing, chopping it up, questing, making friends, Maybe cybering. I don't really know what goes on in some rooms. I did have the pleasure of being on the World of Warcraft public event the other night, and I have to say that it was pretty awe-inspiring to see players of that magnitude in one place. Um, for those of you that are wondering, if you want to go check out publicvent.org, I encourage you to see what Rathamus is doing. If you guys don't know who Rathamus is, he's the founder and creator of uh, Rastrat, which is the Horde AV strategy. So, Alliance, when you're getting your face pummeled in AV, it's because mm -hmm. of a Rastrat is the reason Almost you're getting like your face pummeled. Almost like three percent of the time when you're getting yeah, your ass. He does organize the large pre-maids. But just so you guys are aware, because when I posted this on the page and on a couple other pages I admin for, people were saying, well, why would I bother? Because people are just going to be getting dropped from service. Please understand that with the level that Rathamus has put on the public event, because Typefrag pays for it, Typefrag also pays for it to be able to hel be held to that capacity. It will not allow over 1,000... Um, people on at this moment because at 1,000 people you for sure are going to have some issues but when you log in there's no lag there's no problems there's no issues we uh, there was 900 people on last night when I was on and they're thinking of having a second server um, to they're accommodate another capacity. another yeah. thousand people. So get behind this movement. Go to the to publicvent.org. Go to find Rathamus on Facebook. He's a, he has a World of Warcraft group. Get behind this guy and what he's doing because him and his staff, which I'm excited, uh, I will be moderator training tomorrow to be moderator for the public vent. So I'm excited that Pwncast is getting involved in what he's doing because we are also for, for people. the people just like he is. So good things, good things. Um, that sounds like responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> okay, developer Q and A. Um, that awkward moment when you realize that you were talking about the wrong part at the wrong part of the show. You meant to do that at the end of the show. Whatever. Mm -hmm. It's been a long day, guys. Just bear with me here. It's been it's raid week, and it's been a little bit rough for this girl right here. Developer Q and A. Really, at the end of the day, we got a lot of I'll answer the questions that make people want to shut up on the forums, but I'm not really going to answer the questions you really want to know the answer to. And if I do, I'm going to give you half-assed answers that are not really an answer. It's more of leaving it open. So, they did, like a blizzard, you sound like a blizzard employee. <laughs> they did say that in 6.1 there will not be flying. Even though that's contradictory to what they had stated before, what they had stated before is that in 6.1 they're going to introduce flying. That's not happening. Good. Exciting piece. Uh, Garrison's so you have the the garrison music in the background for those of you that listen to the gameplay. Uh, in the works is you being able to customize the music you hear in your garrison. That was a pretty big deal. To what? To anything? anything? I mean, that was a pretty big deal for me. If I can change, if I can listen to Storm Peaks music is my favorite music. Awesome. So if I could listen to Storm Peaks music in my garrison, hell yeah, right? That's cool. No, that, that, that so that I could put the music in the garrison. That's cool. No, no, that dollar on music when you walk in and it's just like that. that right. oh, inspiring. Oh yes, I, I that has to be mine. I I'm gonna love this because I really like. I don't know what I don't know which one it is. If it's a stormwind. Or if it's just random, but it's just like this Russian choir in the background, and they're like going like insane, and they're really singing like the deepest part of their voice. I have to show you this one. How do you know they're I Russian? Say that one. I, I, I'm saying they're Russian. <laughs> uh, uh, the the point the point of the fact is I would play that one all the time. If I could walk around with that, I would be totally. Okay with that. And I you know they sell World of Warcraft soundtracks. I don't know what they're what level they're going to allow you to customize it. If maybe they're going to say, "Here's the set of songs that we have in game." I'm not sure, um, but I know that they did say that that is something that they wanted to bring. Um, 
that they did want to bring to the table. Um, so my, my favorite question is somebody said, shamans, guys, real talk time. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, shamans t was the typical thing for the conversation and the way that it played out. Um, at the end of the day, there really wasn't anything that we didn't kind of already know. Usually with these things, that they're just regurgitating information but making us feel like we have a voice um, when really you have a voice when you're all uh, bitching on the forums. That's when you have a voice, not in a Q&A. So um, we did link that on the website. So if you want to read more in depth about that, go ahead. And champions yeah. tried to... Three what? We had three admins. One, two, three. I was just one of them on on chat the other day, all talking about you know everyone everyone saying there's problems with shamans, and all three of us were like, well, I play a shaman, so do I. You know, what do you think? And uh, the three of us had concluded that everyone's just just qqing, crying, crying because I play a resto shaman, and I I don't seem to be having problems with my mana. Did I have ma mana problems or d DPS problems for that mana? No. Matter when I went into my DPS spec, no problems here. Um, huge bloke has a, has an alt that's a that's a shaman and he's got no problems. And and Cody's also got a shaman and said well, he's got no problems. That's a very valid point. I'm not saying that they don't have problems. I don't I don't have one. But I think it's says the broken and because I read the article. I read the article and I thought I have yet to hear a shaman telling me that the shamans are no good. But I mean, they were in the right right when the gate opened up to the portal. Yeah, shamans had issues. Oh, so yeah. did mages. But <laughs> but since then, I really haven't had shamans come up to me and be like, "Hey, my class sucks." So when I read that article, I was like, mm, "I don't hear this lately." Mm -hmm. You know. My big complaint about shamans in in warlords is I can't I can't walk and throw my lightning bolt. I yeah. Complaints. I see complaints on the Facebook groups, but I also have a shaman who's elemental, which is supposedly one of the specs that's broken. I don't have a problem with my DPS. It's all good. It's I. Now, granted, I don't main a shaman, so for those of you that main a shaman and are saying that it's broken, we don't really know. I don't know because I don't main a shaman. Spam spam mains a shaman on a on a resto and still does DPS, but because he's resto, he might not see all of the DPS side of it. So I don't want anybody thinking I'm trying to take away yeah, from yeah away. i don't want to take anything oh, away I've been but to rest of shamans as well there's they're saying that like they're out of mana before they start healing even oh, huh. and i i'm saying that's just people. That's, true. Yeah, that's that's all i got to say Stacks champions treadblade it is available for purchase um 100k gold which we all knew that wasn't a big surprise um oh man the the pages are rough we had to block two people from pwncast because they were very nasty towards alliance on the pwncast page and for those of you that know me very well i don't put up with that stuff on the page well i i, I heard about this but i i didn't see what was said i can't even repeat what was said because it yeah, is a derogatory nasty. term towards a certain uh lifestyle i can't even tell you what was said okay. but it you know me. I'm usually like, okay, let's not do this. This is a warning. They didn't get a warning. They got an instant ban. Um, and this was an alliance. They're against the yeah. yeah. All the I, ladies. All it's the just a bike. Who cares? I, ab I absolutely cannot stand that we're – now, I'm an alliance character, so take this in mind. I cannot stand the idea that we're giving this, this, this chopper. Again, if I said it from the beginning, if they would have said it was available to those – to the losers at a cost, that would have been fine. If it was up front with it, that's fine. But for me, no. This I, I, I don't play a horde. I don't plan on playing a horde, and I, I just, I still am so against this. This was pandering to I, those that are queuing, and it's something Blizzard's never really done in the past, agreed. but they finally caved in, and I just, I disagree with I it. I agree with you there. Can, can my horde character buy an alliance no. chopper for hundred k? <laughs> No. That would no. be worth it. But it's there if you guys want to buy it. I personally... It's a little drama. I'm, it's a little drama. Actually, it, I don't want to spend 100k gold on a mount that I'm never going to use. So I'm going to pay that much for a yak, if anything. I'm not going <laughs> to... You have been obsessed with that <laughs> yak for as long as I've known you. <laughs> I want that yak so bad. Aww. Can, does anybody want to do a gold fund? Anybody want to transfer Tune over to Argent Dawn and do a gold fund? Because he, <laughs> he really wants a yak. It's, since as long as I've known him, I've always heard that. How much of his is mouth. a stupid yak? It's true. I even fly over there sometimes How and look at it. How much is the yak? Just like, 
How much is this? Oh, it's more than you that. You want your own. That's 100 Ain't nobody got gold for that. <laughs> together for him, really. I, I think we're going to do we're gonna do a gold fundraiser for Fries and Tickets. Yeah. I got one gold for you. Fries and <laughs> I, I want a minute a minute of dancing for every copper that I give you for it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thanks a lot. The other item on the news agenda was the professions. Um, they did make it where some of the craftables do not require the items that are on a daily cooldown. So. So they did make it where some stuff is a little bit easier to craft, um, and actually they lowered some of the numbers of what was needed uh, to be in those craft. There's way too many for us to list. It's up did on they, when, when did they do It's also on our on our page. Elvine is actually the one that it wasn't an official. They talked about profession changes, but they didn't list any statistics or have any backing for that. It was actually Elvine, which most of you know Elvine's the gold making mage. Um, the gold -making he's mage. the one that went in and did all the, the info. He's the one that does all the Excel spreadsheets. I mean, he's just super into math, which this girl's not. So, um, so go to Elvine's page, go to our page, wherever you choose to get it, you can read at it from there. We do not rely on our professions as a one person because we all have a different profession, so we all just give it to each other. So it's not a huge make or break deal really um, for us as a whole, especially if with the guild. It doesn't really matter. Um, I visit all of uh, Lycan's garrison stuff and, <laughs> and buy crap and do stuff there because, that, I mean, we just, that's what we do. I don't think any of us have sold a craftable piece yet just because, I mean, the guild that we're in, yeah, the Riders of Rohan are, are so close-knit that, I mean, people are just giving away the craftables left and right, and we could be making a fortune. I sold one because no one told, no one said they needed it. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you if he completely didn't ask in guild chat if anybody needed it. He asked at 5 in the morning when everyone was like, Whoa. Uh-oh, so spam got excited, uh -oh. that's why. Keep talking. Crazy. Burnished leather is... Spam moves enough. when he talks, he it's gets like really excited. <laughs> um, <sighs> talked about... Oh, we're talking about the mount? Yeah, there's a new mount. Um, in addition to the new mount, there's also the pet. The pet is the Argy Space. Oh. I don't there. Everybody's calling it a space goat. I don't really know I if that's official. It's a space um, goat. In, it's blue. The thing says intergoat lactic. That's my favorite. Um, it's ten dollars. It goes towards. Um, it goes to the American Red Cross for what? Ebola. Who <laughs> <laughs> is it? You can be like this conspiracist. Is that funny? Why is funny? People walked back on Skype and like and said, Fry's mom has Ebola," and I'm like, "Seriously? What?" What? <laughs> it's all day, people. Uh, it's stop. all day. It <laughs> stop. It's weeks. I have a real life bully. I do. <laughs> stop. Stop. So, so, I got something to say about this. So, I am so excited, and it's not the first time Blizzard's done this. Obviously, we've seen the other companions and mounts they gave away for charities, and I love it because it's a hundred percent of the of the givings. And what's crazy is I buy a lot of tools at my job. And sometimes our dealers will say, okay, well, we got to have a charity, you know, uh, breast cancer charities and all kinds of other cancers. And it's like 5% of the purchase is going to go towards the, the charity. I'm like, are you serious? The tool is like $200 and you don't give them 5% or it's a thousand dollars. And to me, it's like, don't, and, and then you have to buy the, the certain color or it's not going to go to charity, and it's like usually right, you a have pink, to buy a pink. A right. pink. It's like I'm not going to buy a pink tool. You know what I mean? But uh, uh, so I'm very happy. I'm very, not, I'm very happy to see that the whole thing goes to it. You know, I like Price that. I really supports, did. Uh, supports research for breast cancer. Imagine that. Uh, <laughs> just saying, imagine. I like, I like breasts. I can't, I can't. <laughs> of all the charities he could be involved in, it's Save the Booby Charity, which I have boobs, so I'm excited about that. But that's so cliche. <laughs> Uh, that's ridiculous. I, we might have lost it over there. Uh, yeah, I love this pet, by the way, and, and only because one, I, I mean, the ability—it it straight up tells you that it's a uh, a Draenei, and, and for them to finally play into the whole space goat thing with the Draenei, I, I absolutely love it, and I can't wait to get my little RG my own just so I walk around and just kick it all the he time. So plants, right? He face plants, right? He randomly will face plant. Yep. That's He's He's yep. top heavy, so He's when the when fainting he's goat, there, guys, the fainting next, goat. He falls forward. He falls forward. So I have a question. The molten corgi, <clears throat> he puts his butt and drags his butt on the floor. <laughs> oh, oh, it's terrible. Is he going back and smelling it? 
I think he's licking it. Yeah, like, I don't know. He's smelling, I think he's like smelling the malted brew. He's and eating you know, it, licking it. You know, sometimes dogs do weird stuff with their own body fluids. So I mean, because I was just wondering about that because it never really tells you. They what lick he's their doing own that, crotches. Right? So do I think they're opposed to licking their own poo? No. Yeah, we're all have capable dogs. of licking our own oh, crotches yeah. if we had the ability to do it, and we don't have the ability to do it. You can't judge a dog. You can't do it right now. Is what's happening? Wow. <laughs> This episode has gone. Okay. I have a brother who can who can do it and chooses not. To. <laughs> I so what's happening? If you're out there, officially lost the name control of this podcast. Brother, the nameless brother who's out there. You thought we were the go-to people for professional news? Boy, did you tit play wrong. <laughs> I agree the guard is available for 10 bucks. 100% of the proceeds so, go to... Uh, a question for the... Really trying to play the nice guy. Comment on the video if you're listening to us on iTunes. Give us a review. And in the review on iTunes, ask this. tell us this question. What do you think the Corgi's doing uh, with the fluids from the butt... Wiping on the floor. <laughs> what do you, and where do you weigh on? Uh, where do you weigh in on the was, subject of to lick yourself or to not lick yourself? Like what? I would like to know because it was funny. It was funny the first time I saw it. It was funny because I was sitting there and I think I was talking to you, uh, Bell. And I was sitting there and I'm and we're on. I'm sharing my screen with you because we're we're doing something. And I go, uh, I go. Uh, oh, he's putting his for his butt on the floor. How cute. And what is he doing now? <laughs> You're pretty accurate. Uh, now, I just, I just like to point out. I said like six months ago that this corgi was going to be amazing, and and now we've got like a whole so episode about slap, corgis. Yeah, like, you know, <laughs> not a animation on old skeletons. It is not a joke. He's it cute. I'm not going to lie, but I'm not impressed. Um, the pets. So it's Greening Reaver. He's yeah, Greening Reaver is the part. mount. Now I've got to tell you, I need to have this oh, mount as a warlock. I. So, I need – I'll so put a sexy. screen – I'll put a picture right here of the pet and the mount. Man, is it amazing. Go grab those up. Right now, the Grinning Reaver is only buyable. Mm-hmm. You cannot gift is, it. Once it's gifted, watch Pwncast because we'll be giving it away. Right now, we are giving away the Argy pet because it is now giftable. So make sure you head over to the page. But no matter what you do, get behind this pet thing. Even if you don't want it, buy it for somebody else. It's $10, and like Fraza mm-hmm. said, it's 100% towards – Ebola. I don't really know. I'm going to shut up. But it, it, whatever, it's for the Red Cross. Even if they don't use it for okay. Ebola, Fine. at least I it can be used for something um, that's for a charitable thing. So get behind that. Um, I, <laughs> Ebola. Freaking crying out loud. Uh, <laughs> you guys <love> <laughs> um, I stopped. We're losing I know. I, <laughs> the whole World of Warcraft community is laughing at me right now because I've been hearing the same thing like Ebola. They didn't want to get behind AIDS or any of the other things that are going on in America, but Ebola, I, whatever. Okay, I'm done. Um, hi, Malzo. Is that what the is that what the aggression towards the Ebola is about? Because I'm a little uh, of all the things that the world of work has a charity for. Why would it be Ebola? Well, because is that what it is? Of all the things, why Ebola? Because it's currently yeah. threatening the hell out. I of agree. Us. I don't just I don't go you to know, Texas because I know Ebola's in Dallas. I just don't go to Texas. <laughs> I'm not going to right? Yeah, let's stay out of Texas. Uh, to, um, to, all our, to all our viewers in, in, in Dallas, you know, the, I'm just kidding. Pwncast does not condone the thoughts and, and ideas of our cast members. <laughs> just Eve, like I said, I've had my head stuck in a Texas. Guys, I'm in a little bit of a rare mood and so is spam. Let's talk about all the it's, it's been a rough week for some of us with the opening of, uh, of High Mall. Uh, yay for raids! Kind of yay for guild runs. Yeah. Um, hi, Malz. Um, besides me, huh? did anybody besides me get the gladiator reference with the Cargath fight and the tigers and the chains? Well, yeah, it was his pit. And the, and the, and the, and the, expected him to put like a metal mask on, yeah. But and it was also his pit that he was forced to fight in, correct? Fantastic. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. Fantastic. I love it's it. It's not fun I, when you fall fight, the tigers, um, for sure. I, uh, I'm going to have to put myself in just to see what happens. I think that's broken on a mechanic, though, because I got knocked into the tiger pit twice in one fight, and I survived both times. That's because you have a billion hit points. Well, I'm not that well, 400,000, but you know, still. 
I watched when we were doing our raid today. I'm pretty sure we're gonna talk about that. But when we were doing our raid today, it was funny because I have blazing speed and blink and everything, and I'm standing right next to the tiger pit because that's away from the two fiery pillars. And I see the guy. He's focused on the person behind me, and so I see him coming at me. So I blink and run away. And but when I'm doing that, the person that that's, that's um, focused, he looks and goes, "Oh man!" And he goes right into the pit. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> That's one way to avoid getting bum rushed is to right. fall to the pit, but you're probably gonna get eaten by a lot. Yeah. So. Avoid one mechanic to fail at another. Yeah. High mall's been the That's talk of everybody's nation. Um, our guild's been doing it for two days. We're only on the second boss, but for half of the guildies who haven't stepped into a raid before, and for the other half who it's a new raid, progression happens. We're not elitist, but we we do want to progress and do it as a team. I'm very very proud of our guild. We did uh, really solid as a team. Some improvements to be made, like with every guild, um, but or with every group that you're just learning how to run with together. Um, <clears throat> some mini rages invent as we adjust to each other's personalities and learn when somebody's being upset because they're frustrated and it's not necessarily towards the other person. So um, vent with caution when you're in a raid group. <laughs> just just vent with mm -hmm. caution. Um, but the, the run, it's really, really nice. Uh a lot of work. They actually put me in a position of semi-importance on Butcher. Um, not really the right thing to do because yeah. Bell just pew pews. You want Bell to do what? You want me to switch stacks with somebody and then pew pew and then switch and pew pew? What? <laughs> so they they probably could have put me on on running circles. I did good the though. Uh, I really did good. Then nobody would notice my damage. I though. did good. Well, I was gonna say, did that have to be you? Did it have? Could it be anybody? I have, it, it could have been I, anybody. But they're making me do it because I don't ever ever do anything important. That and I have do okay. I do have better self survivability <laughs> as a destruction <laughs> warlock than most other. Um, of right. the range DPS, so it was better for me to be the one that does it. But I did really well, didn't tunnel vision. What are your guys' thoughts? Uh, what, is there anything that you guys don't understand on a raid level that we can help you understand? Anything that you guys need that we can help you? Um, feel free to get a hold of us, either email us, whatever. That's what we're here for. We have several of our admin staff yeah, that are... there's a boss that's driving you nuts. We yeah. have Hot like, for, Hots, which... Hots for Shots is, is running Heroics. You know he, you know that elitist he's, mofo. He's seven, I mean... Seven, seven, seven and, uh, just kidding. Three, Hots, I'm just kidding. For seven on Heroic, I yeah, think he's, he's, Yeah, yeah. He, he came, two for seven he, on he came so. in and a, 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 came and helped us today. It was it pretty, pretty uh, funny. Yeah, everyone, and, and, everyone took my spot today. And Fries will answer any raid questions you have. Just you're not allowed to ask me because I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not having that conversation. <laughs> We're not having that conversation. No, no, no. Before the show, there was a ranting going on, and we're not talking about that right now. Oh, no. That was shot. Listen, guys, everybody should understand that even though we argue on occasion about certain things, that we all love each other very much, and it does come with a place from uh, come from a place with love. We're not even going to get into what the argument was about because at the end of the day, no. it wasn't even that serious because two of the three party members were merely trolling him, and apparently we went too far with the trolling because it literally it literally enraged him. So we learned a hard lesson there with trolling people, and we're never going to do it again. So we're sorry to the wild guys. Just, I, I want to say with my with my homo experience this week, I, I will have to give a shout out though to uh, Bell's brother uh, has a gnome DK by the name of Big Dom. Um, it was refreshing. I, I mean, I'm coming from a different raid group. Uh, some there's a pretty hardcore group. I mean, we're going five hours a night, three nights a week, and it was nice to come into a new raid, new guild, and to have another tank that actually knew what the hell they were doing. And it was actually whispering. We're whispering each other back and forth, saying, oh, wait, I, I screwed up here. Try it this way. And it was nice to work with somebody that actually was able to think. You know, I get so caught up with the, the, the LFR situation that it was nice to have somebody there. So, so yeah. what did you think about having twin, twin Death Knights? Think it was it's good. my favorite it's combination good. because it's Death Knights are amazing right now. So. So can I say this? Can I say this that warriors are still are still horrible? Well, in my opinion, work very well. Warriors are still pretty bad tanks. So it's funny because every time I go into a heroic dungeon, and I'm pretty sure in the LFR raids, I'm about to start doing without you guys because I'm an idiot. Uh, uh, I, every time I have an ad, the second I have an ad run at me and hit me, I look and go, "Who's our tank?" And it's a warrior. It's a warrior. <laughs> it's a warrior. It has to be a warrior. They can't keep aggro. It is not their fault. <laughs> if you're out there and you're yelling at your warrior tank to keep aggro, he 
can't. He can't do nothing about it. There is nothing he can do. He has one three-minute cooldown. Once that cooldown is done, there's nothing he can do. Five ads come down. He's got nothing. He's got nothing. So keep that in mind. Uh, if you are yelling at your warrior uh, who can't keep aggro, three minutes. Run with a different type of tank. I leave the group with <laughs> a warrior tank. I'm not gonna lie. I've been surprised you, very few with good with warrior tanks who know how to compensate for that by making sure that they're doing so much damage that they are forced to hold the aggro because they are pulling the aggro that way. Mm-hmm. So yes, you're right, Death Knight are warriors. For the record, people yeah. used to say the same thing about Death Knights like two expansions ago. Yeah, right, but warriors right. really do people have a problem holding aggro. Death were, yeah, they, 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 have, they, they have, have to individually people. click. On, on somebody to taunt them, and that's like what a 15 second ta- uh, 15 second cooldown. Yeah. So yeah, so it's like a 15 second, then they're on the boss, and like an ad comes out, and they're like, now it's, it's ready, now it's, it's like kind of the opposite. I I turn on blood presence, and I don't even have to try to hold aggro. Um, mm-hmm. So death knights are fixed. Um, maybe they should give, you know, a warrior some sort of buff that gives them a better way to hold aggro. I don't know. Right. Fix it could, be, it could be just just warriors trying to learn a new new way the class runs too because I mean a lot, there, a lot of things change for death knights. A lot of things change for warriors. Yeah, I have no idea what it's like to take for a warrior in a war. So and have like a warrior episode. I think it, it's it's in the works. We just got that would up. be me ranting for my last seven years of playing the game. <laughs> Shh. We're trying to avoid the rants on this show. Uh, I'm done. Because We're gonna get- <laughs> Your hate mail. We love rants, though. I love rants. I rants make. I'm not even a warrior, and I and I simplify it. And I'm I'm very very I'm. I sympathize. I, yeah, I, we, did them, get, totally. we did get I through feel- the news. We did get through the news rather quickly. We do have uh, an awesome uh, lore section that's coming up right now. Um, and I know that there's. Has anybody seen Moneybags the Goblin? Because I. I've been looking for Moneybags the Goblin, and I don't. I know he has some kind of grinds my gears this week, and I just. You know what grinds my gears? Three plus three equals six, but so does four plus two, and five plus one. Just because you know how to do something right. doesn't mean there isn't a better way. <laughs> That's all I got to say. This week. <laughs> that was amazing. This is why you are friends. What I mean to say, what Moneybags is trying to say, guys, is just because you've done reg- normal mode and just because you've done the heroic mode and you've figured out how to do it, doesn't mean that my guild hasn't also done it 20 times and also figured out how to do it and that I'm not also already doing it on my alt. So maybe I figured out a better way. Maybe you figured out a better way. <laughs> Let's communicate. Or let me do the voice again. Let's communicate and not just yell at each other in those groups. I'm suggesting that you should maybe listen to your neighbors. They might have a good idea. I, I'm i crying. I have tears of joy. <laughs> There's tears yeah. of joy. Uh, I love it. Son. I love it. <laughs> I love it. That was... That was... That was epic. awesome. That was pretty Absolutely epic. I don't, I don't even Maybe know how to... Maybe this is a better way. I'm supposed to follow that up with my, you... my segment. I don't know what I'm supposed to do now. Uh, don't you just love him? <laughs> He's by far the... I know, right? <laughs> this is an inside joke. Uh, this is supposed to be my morning for when I'm ready to stop recording, but I it really wasn't supposed to be that. It just ended up that I smacked myself <laughs> in the face. When I was trying to stop earlier due to tech issues, it's been a really long week, guys. Just you gotta bear with me. <laughs> Spam, I hate you. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Sometimes we entertain ourselves, guys. True story. Uh, even if you're not laughing with us, I guarantee you're laughing at us. Which a laugh is a laugh. I'll take it one way or the other. Um, so I I'm, I, so I'm gonna do. I'm hearing a little bit of my echo. I hear echo too. Sorry, guys, if you guys heard the echo, we're gonna make sure we're not hearing an echo. I don't hear it anymore. I don't hear it anymore. We're nope. good. Um, so I'm gonna save Lycan's lore section till after I do mine because his is a pretty epic se- section, and I don't want to devalue it. I want to end the the 
the show with that um, and then all that good stuff. Um, so I thought about doing something fun. And one of the fun things that I wanted to do is we've always prided ourselves on the page of, of giving profession advice, um, how to make cool gold in the auction house, um, how to be successful in dungeon runs, a lot of gameplay tips, which is our own experiences. So you're getting real life experiences. You're getting not a pro experience. You're getting real people with real skill sets. Um, we're not scrubs, but we're not pros either. So I thought it would be neat if we started doing Bell Bites, which Bell's Bites are going to be my weekly contribute. You guys, if you need something explained, if you need to know anything at all, send me an email, send me a message on Facebook, whatever the case may be, and I will answer it on Bell's Bites. I will give you in-depth. If I don't know the answer, I will research it until I find the correct answer via somebody who actually is playing. I'm not talking about a WoW head guide. WoW head guides are awesome. They're wonderful. They're great. Are they personalized? No, they're not. WoW head's great. WoW insider's great. All these websites that offer these guides are wonderful, but are they personal? No, they're not. Are they from real people doing it? Nope. It's from data mining. That's what it's from. So now each week I want to, I, we want to be able to give that to you. So as a whole, we will research and we'll do Bell's Bites every week. Um, if you guys don't give me topics that you want to know about, I'll pick them. So this week we didn't have any Bell's Bites because we covered a lot of tips last week on certain things like garrisons, how to optimize, making sure you're picking the right followers. So for this week what I wanted to do is shout out some people. Um, this last week... We've, all of us, because we've run dungeons and all these things, we've ran with some pretty awesome groups. I was stalking the follower Goldmane. Goldmane is a level 100 follower in Nagrand. Mm -hmm. And what happened is I must have sat there for, geez, two hours. If somebody has the key and doesn't open the cage, the boss won't respawn. The boss will only respawn when you open the cage or after several, several hours. Because um, normally his respawn rate um, is pretty quick, pretty quick. Pardon me. So we sat there for a good two, three hours. At the end of the day, I could not. Um, at the end of the day, I could not get it. So I was out of there. I took off, went back to my garrison, was doing my missions. Um, way. So guess what happened to me? I left the group, oh. and I'm sitting there. I'm talking to. I think I was even talking to to like on Skype. Not sure. These guys sent me a whisper and then sent me a group invite. They brought me back to kill the guy when he respawned. These were people that I did not know. I had never played with. We were just in a random group because they were also up there farming for the same guy. They went out of their way to go back through their history of their chat to find my name, to add me to their group, to make sure I got the kill. And was a I waited, not the kill, but waited for them to open the cage. People that Wait, didn't so, need me. So you were standing there with those people... For and then hours. you logged, you left the group I and everything, see, yep. and then they saw the boss or someone had a key, and they said, oh, we can do it now. Let's go to chat, and let's find that person who was with us before. Yep. That's, that's, that's awesome. Can I that's tell you, awesome. I was blown away by, I was blown away that they, they didn't have to. They already had the key. They were ready to open the cage. I want to shout out who their names are. Um, their names are Sybil. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Sithel, um, Maria Lynn, and wow. El Stuffy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm players are these random, random, random. But Sithel is the one that invited me to the group, and I just want to make sure that if you're watching this, that you know that it was very appreciated. Now, I want to tell you what you did for me because the way you did. I then got into my guild after he respawned again when they all left. I killed, got the key, brought all of my guildies to me to open the cage for them. So all of my guildies that were on at the time also got the level 100 follower. This warlock paid it forward. Is that key uh, one use? Yeah, yes. it's one use. I have one in my bank right now in case guildies need the follower. Okay. Yeah, so. needs a follower. <laughs> I like, I'll one. take another follower. You're I got no you. Follower. I have the key. We can we can get that for my, you. Also, My wife would want that too, yeah. Um... Dungeon runs. I ran a solo. I ran a dungeon, pugged in myself, um, got in with some guys. I wanted to shout these guys out. In addition to this being an awesome run, what was really impressive about these guys is they ninja jacked me. That what this what happens when you find somebody you like in the group, you ninja, you hijack, and you keep requeuing. Um, these guys stopped for me to do my lunar fall inquests in all the runs we went in because I had a couple in each dungeon. They stopped 
took me to where I needed to go to pick up my Lunar Fall Inn. How many other Pug Heroic Dungeon groups do you know where people do that for you? Nobody mm-hmm. ever does that for you. None. And matter of fact, I had said, I, I, in chat, I said, I think I have a, a quest here. And the one guy says, oh, I know right where it is. I'm going to take you on the shortcut right know, now. Do you know what I usually do? Because people, because like I'm a healer and the tank, the big healer tank problem right now is that the tanks just keep going and going and going. Yeah, they don't care about So I, I usually finish the dungeon, say goodbye to everybody, and then walk backwards through the dungeon and go get to my do it. Yep. That's what it's I was, I was so planning fast. on doing that. They're so fast that if I stop, everybody dies. Yep. You know what I mean? Everybody. These guys are uh, Barcado, or it might be Barcodo. I don't know. He was a druid healer. Man, was he fantastic. Uh, Mate, Mythworld, and I think it's Tier Real. Um, they were awesome guys. Uh, if you guys are watching this, thank you if you're listening Barcodo's to this. Barcodo's also cool. Argentine, yeah? Yep, they were a mixture of Argent. Yes, no, no, none of these guys in this dungeon were Argent Dawn. No, just random. No, these are, this is what makes it even better, is that normally people from pug groups and heroic dungeons don't really give a crap what you need. Um, and, uh, last on my list, Raven from Manoroth. Raven from Manoroth, you are a druid, and I am assuming you are a man. Here's what happened Uh-oh. in this dungeon. So Uh-oh. this dungeon, this druid, right, druid tank... Uh, there were some tank issues. It's not my place to speak about tank issues because I'm a DPS, so I let the healer and the tank duke it out, whatever. I say one thing, and you want to know what I said? (laughs) You want to know what I said? Can common sense please finally be common? That's all I said. This guy proceeds to then direct his anger towards me. First of all, he called me a dude, told me that I was being a badass bro, and that um, I'm a tough guy. <laughs> he calls me a t- member. You guys were in there, right? We were here for this. Calls this all a, makes sense. Calls me a tough this. guy, right? I'm a tough guy who needs to put a sock in it because I think I'm bad. I'm a badass dude, pro, right? First of all, I have a vagina, just so you know. <laughs> Second of all, all I said is when is common sense going to start being common? I didn't insult anybody. I just, it was, it was, I was right. You guys were with me. Was I wrong about the tank issue or was I right about the tank issue? We all felt that way, right? Right. No, right. I, <laughs> yeah. No, we were all there. Right. I wasn't there. I, I, so, I was there. Were, the reason why there, he, he was there. He was. I was there. I was standing right behind you. Healing. I remember that guy just shooting out of nowhere. <laughs> yep. Out of nowhere. Yeah. Busting and just, you, blah, blah. And it was. Blah, and I was just like. <laughs> he thought I was you, a dude. You pushed him over the edge. Here's the point. And I don't even know where it came from. All yeah. I said is, when is common sense going to start being common? But can I tell you something? Number one, for you to assume that every player you play with, play with is a male, that's the reason you suck as a tank because you don't rely on other teammates to help do what you need to do in a dungeon because you think because you have a penis that you are better than everybody else. So, number one, you're wrong. Number two, you seriously, seriously need to step away from the game if me saying common sense needs to be common enrages you so much that you proceed to give me a nice long paragraph, which I did screenshot, of you insulting me when all I said was, when is common sense going to be common? <laughs> That's all I'm going to yeah, say no, about you're that. Not, you're not the only one. Me and Spamberger had a tank uh, go on us pretty hard, uh, especially on Spamberger. I love it. For whatever reason, he, this guy was a dick from the start, and he cussed me out. Uh, something happened with me before he started yelling at Spamberger, he said, well, no, he was yelling at everybody. It wasn't just me and you. It was everybody. He was like, you guys need to get these um, – you guys need to remove curses for – um, from me, oh, yeah, that too. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. he kept pulling too many bo- mob bosses, and it was a horrible disaster. So finally, I typed in and go, "Hey man, why don't you like try marking or leading like leading us to tell us who you want us to kill?" And his first words he said, almost in the whole thing, was, "Shut the f up, mother effer. You know, you're just da da da." And then we were just like, "Whoa!" <laughs> and we can't boot him out of the party because you have to be in there for a certain amount of time to boot him out yeah. of the party. So then we go down the stairway. And now he's not getting enough heals, according to him. And I, he if starts, I was spam, I wouldn't heal him either. He just got and he was, it, was, it was great because the guy was pulling. What happens? He was pulling like five mobs without any DPS is being around him, any healer. And then he's like, oh, oh, your heals are trash, your heals are this. And we just left. And you know what? If I agree, if you're going to blow up like that, step away from your computer. For real? Stop playing for three days. Calm down. Like, seriously, you don't need to go off on people like that when they're not even necessarily calling you out, but, you know, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna take a gander at a guess and say these tanks probably lived in their grandmother's basement and were can probably I, raging I, because I, grandma didn't make the Ovaltine and ham sandwich is really why they're upset. So it's all good. It's all good. Right? We'll go back to the I've kitchen. Been her works. You know, I, I, Fiza caught me up last night at like at like I don't even know what hour of the morning. Um, and I I say all the time I'm not gonna do I'm not gonna heal for pugs, but then I like it it, it gets to a point where I kind of have to. Right. Um, so I was beating my head against the against the desk at four o'clock in the morning, and Fiza right. caught me late at night. And I gotta tell you, people expect to get carried. They do. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Ain't Stand no money got time for I'm, that. I'm gonna plow through it, get my gear, and be out of here and doing heroics tomorrow. And uh, you know, get get real people. You're gonna have to run. Normal five times before you do heroic five times before you get the gear that you need to be expecting for these raids and and dungeons to be easy. You need to be running them multiple times to get the gear, not once, not twice, not three times. Good advice. We've all successfully ranted. I think there might be a full moon. Uh, (laughs) It is a full moon. I think it is. It really? It is. I ran a dungeon last night where where the the three DPSs were all dead, and the tank was standing like knuckle to knuckle with the boss, and I was standing there going like one 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 because he was like squishy. Gotta stop moving. Gotta stop moving. Your mic's doing stuff. Um. So in a nutshell, yeah. If 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 three DPSs are dead and 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 the healer is spamming (laughs) fastest they got on your tank in order to kill the boss. You don't belong in that dungeon. Yeah, right. I'm going to agree with you on that one. And I know we're going way off time and way off subjects here. I know, I know. But uh, me and uh, Spamberger had a great bonding experience in uh, what <laughs> that BlackRock uh, or whatever okay. that. that Black Rock, Black Rock, Black. Yeah. So no, we're in no, there and I told, no. I, told him, I, go, I told him, I go, hey, there's dragons in here that are going to blow fire on you. Let's uh, not stand in the fire. <laughs> the whole time, the whole time I'm explaining this fight to Spamberger, he is looking on the bottom like, you know where we are right now? We are in the the entrance I, to I, all these raids and dungeons. I, I go, I know. I had such a moment. He's all, yeah, I see the dragons. I see the dragons. He didn't hear me once say, they going to breathe fire at you. <laughs> so, so they start coming down in the fight and he's like oh, oh they breathe fire on you and I was like <laughs> <laughs> but it, it brought us closer it brought us closer in the end we had a great laugh about it and it was really fun I was the one out Roy in? No? The, old, yeah. the old UBRS ended in, in that throne room right? and the new UBRS there's like a big hole knocked in the wall that goes out yeah. to like the the outer echelon pre raid zone area. Yeah. <clears throat> like the outer map on Azeroth, if you will. And I was bugging out because what used to be world server content, not raid server content, was now in the world. Uh, playable dungeon instance part of the it world. Was cool. I was freaking out for a second, I'll admit. Um. <laughs> I geeked. So that's all I had for that's all I had this week for Bell's Bites. Next week I'll have exactly what you guys are looking for for tips and, and gameplay. And if you guys want me to specifically give you information that you need on a specific subject, um, hit us up on the page or via email. I'm actually going to hand it over to Lycan now, who has an awesome uh, lore segment, and let him introduce who he's going to be talking about. And we all promise to mute so that we don't interrupt. Oh. But if it's really really funny, you know that I can't help it. So I'm going to mute right now oh. and let you let you do your business. We're going to shift a little bit. It's not going to be as, as an interview this week, nor as funny, because a lot of this is going to have to do with a little bit of lore, uh, theory crafting when it comes to lore. Um, so if you have any questions, please stop me at any point. Uh, there is a very little known or lesser known aspect of the game called the Guardian of Tirasville. Now, to those who don't know who the Guardian of Tirasville is, it is a single mortal person that is charged for protecting Azeroth against the Burning Legion. And I, I'm, the reason I'm going into this is because of the conversation with Khadgar. You know, we talked about uh, the Atiesh, which is um, the great staff of the Guardian, which is what was, uh, it was formed actually during, um, I believe, the Battle of Ankaraj. When the gates were opened up, uh, you're able to get this as a, as a spellcaster. Um, 
But what I've noticed recently is that with Cadgar, Cadgar still holding this um, this staff as, as we meet him through not only at any of the shrines or any of the capital cities that we see him at. We saw him at the Dark Portal with it. But to go more, we're, I'm trying to get as much information as I can on whether or not Cadgar would be the next Guardian and what implications this may actually have when it comes to Warlords of Draenor. Now, the interesting thing is there are a couple of attributes that are associated with the Guardian of Terrasol, and that is, of course, wielding the Great Staff of, of, of the Guardian, called it Atiesh, also being able to transform into a Raven as a fl flight form. No other class, no other NPC, no other character throughout the lore has ever been able to trade, change, change into the Dark Raven. And we've seen him uh, as Mediv change into the, gar uh, into the Raven. And then if you actually follow the... Um, the ring quest when it comes through to Wards Wards of Draenor, as you're following him and Chromie and you're on your way searching for Kairos and what happened to, to Grom, or I'm sorry, Garros and Kairos as they came into the Draenor, he follows you around as, as, a, as, a, as a raven. And it, and it opens you up again to who is the new guardian. Now, a little bit of history about it. You had the Council of Tiraspell, and the Council of Tiraspell was formed over around 3,000 years ago. It was done by an elf society called the Council of Silvermoon. And what they have done is they had tried, there were uh, mages that were opening up um, summoning portals to uh, demons in Dalaran, and they wanted a way to protect themselves against this. So this council got together, and there were several members on them, all of whom are, are deceased except for one. And that is uh, Meryl Fellstorm, and we'll go into him just slightly. But the rest of them are all deceased. Agewin is some notable names. That is Medivh's uh, mother. Um, you have uh, Hungarian and Huglar. They were two mages that were opening up portals, or supposedly opening portals in Stormwind, which we find out that it was actually Medivh going around and, and killing all these council members. And, and Medivh was actually on the council, and he was actually the original, um, or he wasn't the original, he was the next last guardian. Um, Nellis Aran, which would be Medivh's father, and they all gave a little bit of their power to allow this guardian to, to be able to go ahead and use everything possible. He was able to use the arcane, he was able to use shadow, he was able to use the light, um, he was able to use nature, frost, fire, no matter what type of magic or any type of div divination that was in, in World of Warcraft, he was able to use it. So this went on for generations, and we're talking seven different guardians, um, I'm sorry, six different guardians, starting with Elodi, the first guardian, and you had Aranda and Scabelli, then you have Agewin. Agewin was the first one to actually encounter Sargeras face-to-face and encountered the uh, avatars of Sargeras in Northrend. And here's where everything started going awry. As she killed him, his spirit actually, he, he was able to possess Agewin. And as he possessed Agewin, he turned around and um, he, tur he turned around and possessed her and was able to actually go ahead and possess Medivh while he was still in the womb as well. You know, and then if you follow anything with the Lord, Medivh is the one to open up the dark portal through Gul'dan on the other side. He was able to go ahead and make a mind link with them. He's the reason that uh, Cadgar is that, a, that old, because during this mind meld that he had with Gul'dan, he attempted, he stabbed him, and boom, he died. You know, when he died, he cursed Cadgar. So, you know, everything was going fine. He had a love child, Medivh, with Garona half orkin which was a you know, half-orc, half-human, or half-something. Some people say it was half Draenei. Uh, assassin had a love child by the name of Medan. Now, Nothing really in game talks about Medan. Um, he, he was the guardian. Uh, we needed to carry on the guardianship, and at Agewin's behest, he, they they went ahead and started a new council. And um, when Mediv came back, he was resurrected um, and came back as a spirit, convinced them to start the new council, and they were able to convince them to get Medan to to take on the guardianship. You know, and, and there were people asked to be on this council. First of all, you have Lady uh, Jada Proudmore. She's on the council. You had um, Thrall was approached to be on the council. He declined it. He did not want anything to do with the new council, uh, supposedly because that he had stuff going on with the Cataclysm and trying to re-heal re, uh, the Ur Ur Azeroth. Uh, Cadgar was approached to be on her. He declined to be on the new council. 
And what's interesting is that you, 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 first of all, when you're when you're approached to be a member of the Council of Terrace Vault, you don't say no. I don't want to be a member um, because it, it it is the highest or, highest order that you could be brought into. And and what what's confusing me now, and what's what I, we're, we're going to look into a little bit further next week with the discussion on Mediv. Where is Medan? Why did he step down as guardian? If he did step guardian down as guardian. In his category, the new guardian, what implications does this have to play into coming into World Wars of Draenor? Um, I understand that we will probably be moving into more with the uh, with the, the Burning Legion and with the demonic invasions and things of that nature. But why was nothing ever said in game about how Etiash became in his possession? So I, I know it's a little different than what we've been doing. I know we've been doing the interviews. It's kind of hard to interview mm-hmm. mostly dead people. But, you know. Go ahead, Spam. This is where I do you absolutely think, ask away. Do you think that he's already been bestowed the title and just hasn't bothered to tell us? That's my theory. Because he's already got the staff. I mean, I think right. that establishes. Dude, in, fetus in possession? Like, Say what? what? Am I the only again? one that heard oh. that? That there's a fetus yeah, possession? straight out of anime, Oh, it? yeah. Sargeras, whenever oh. she would van- he, when H would vanquish him, and in the book, if you read this, uh, you see Cadgar going back in a vision, and it, it's really cool because they never actually said it happened right then and there, but you know it did. You could see her walking across the, the snow pack of, uh, of Northrend, and it's like she glided over the snow. She went, and Sarger thought, okay, I got this. You know, this, this little whelp, <laughs> insulin whelp, I got her. And meanwhile, she struck him, and when she struck him with this spell, it basically turned him from stone from his heart out. And he tried like hell to get rid of it. And that was Could the not fetus that did this? Spell. No, no, this was Adwin oh. doing it to Sargris, the, the, you know, the demon lord. And while he tried to get rid of this spell, couldn't do it, and he turned to stone. But as he turned to stone, and they, they look back towards Adwin as she starts walking away, she now walked, and the snow came up to her knees. She was real light walking into this battle, and then all of a sudden she started walking, and the snow would come up to her knees. Like, she sunk down like she weighed 5,000, 6,000 pounds. Now, they wanted a guardian. They did not want to keep choosing a guardian. They wanted to provide an heir for Adwin so that she could go ahead and have a guardian and pass it down like a lineage. So she she contacted Nellis Aran, and it, it, it's actually a very good uh, chapter to her, and he's all proud of himself because he finally bedded down the, you know, the age one, which mind, mind you, she was, like yeah. <laughs> and she was like 800 years old at this time, mind you. So, oh, you know, that's, yeah. That's experience the right there. <laughs> exactly. The older well, we are, the, isn't there a saying? The, the, I, the more experienced, exactly. The sweeter the juice or something? I don't know. I, what is it? What you get? What I don't you know. Get, it seems like it's inappropriate. You, but, <laughs> no, but she turned around and looked, and she goes, all I wanted you was for your seed. I got what I wanted. And she played him and just basically turned I mean, He wanted to serve her breakfast. And she's like, I'm. turns it on a man. I'm just throwing that out yeah. there. Like, maybe she's, in World of Warcraft, that needs to happen more often. She's like, I don't have time for this shit. I'm done. I, I've gotten what I wanted to. I'm out of my way. Okay. What's so, his, left his girl with no fangs. Like, am I wrong? You was, don't have no fangs. You're not, you're not a warrior. You die. Bye. Right. Right. That's too But funny. once, once Ageman was pregnant, Sargers found a way to come back, and he wanted to get back in this world. So he came through. Yes, he possessed the fetus <clears throat> of Mediv. And it really, as you know, when he came to his powers at 20, it was a constant struggle between the Guardian and Sargers. You know, the, the, the absolute good and the absolute evil in the world of Azeroth. And then he was in a coma for 20 years. When he awoke from the coma, he was able to do his guardian stuff. Things started going like hell, you know, the demons and everything. I wish this was real life. I know. I'd love to just hit it and quit it and then have a fetus possessing people. Like, that's <laughs> awesome in real life. <laughs> when, when you said uh, Thrall said no because he wanted to take yeah. care of the whole Azeroth, I was like, he's going to take care of the Ebola relief. The Ebola. <laughs> that's right. That's right. No, the Ebola. He... Ebola. He had to go fight with four elements so that he can get married and get uh, Agra pregnant. Agra. That's right. Uh, it's it's, it's all about making the babies. He keep referring to them as love children. Is, is, is this like a Bastodian type situation with the love children that they're not like? Are they love children because it was a hit it or quit it or or 
Daddy just didn't wrap his tool that night? Like, what constitutes a well, love child in World of Warcraft terms? <laughs> with Adrian, with Adrian, it was a definite hit it and quit it. I got because you. Because that's all she wanted. All she wanted was, quote, unquote, his seat. So it's only a love child if the couple is not a couple anymore. It was just a, right. a coming of together, no pun intended, for the child. Right. And then, okay, gotcha. But for Mediv and, and, and Grona, it was <sighs> she had come to Karazhan to be an emissary of the, of the orcs. And when she came in to be an emissary, they just happened to have a fling one night, and he didn't cover it, and boom, you got the dance. It's nice to know that that stuff happened even even in World of Warcraft times. Uh, it is. Straight up. Straight up, right? <laughs> Frex so, is like, breast cancer, straight up. Like, thank you, <laughs> um, you got to watch yourself, man. <laughs> buddy Check 12, I encourage you to be a part of that, Fryza. Buddy Check 12 is to remind your neighbor to uh, – to, check herself so you could you could get in on that uh, buddy check he's like yeah if the prize is willing cool. to give free press exams to anybody out there who's willing to if ask you're interested oh. i mean he's not really particular right. either so i you mean email him at punkcast.net if and, you're a heavy set guy i'll i mean, i'll go in there <laughs> <That's what> I, <laughs> i'll go in there I'll, 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 you know <laughs> there's no but, limits We've Hold reached on. a whole new level uh, tonight yes. that I don't even know. Episode I, 33. I am going to close out, but before I close Looking, out. One more, one more thing. Looking forward to those who want to get a little bit further into the theory crafting about the Guardian and what's going on. Please, please, please email me, like it at punktest.net. I would love to hear your opinions on it and see what you guys think I and think where he would actually be going through in Warlords of Draenor. I think it's already happened. I think, I, I think we're going to see that in this expansion. That's my theory. I okay, think, I think I just the content to, is coming. Let me find the email. I wasn't sure if we were going to have time to do it, but I need to do it. So let me just find it real fast, and then we will get chugging right along. Um, we get a lot of emails. Uh, also want to let you guys know that we had the pleasure of being asked to be on Roe's Realm Maintenance, which you guys are podcasters. We don't need to tell you who Roe is. Um, <clears throat> pretty big day for for Pwncast. Unfortunately, Spammy was not able to be there, but he was definitely there in spirit as we made sure we talked about him. Um, it was a great episode. Cool. It's going to be I airing. I, to see it. I believe he posted on Mondays. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure Mondays the days he doing he's doing it. Get excited because he's going to be on our show Olive. next weekend. So what? 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 We're moving so, up in the world. He's like the Oprah of podcasting. That's how I'm going to mm-hmm. tell people who don't know who Roe is. He's in Roe. If you're listening to this, yes, you are the Oprah of podcasting. <laughs> so. Um, um, Looking for my car. Yeah, you're the, I mean, you're the Geraldo Rivera of podcasting. If he wanted to make you cry on on his show, he would do it. I'm right. Oh, right. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Let's talk um, about your let's talk about your maid. You're like so, <laughs> uh, Elida. Elida, of course, is is with us in spirit, but he wanted me to make sure that he mentioned we mentioned a few things. Um, uh, Thrall's new hairstyle. When he said that, I don't know if he's wanting us for opinions on Thrall's new hairstyle. I don't really fancy Thrall in any form or fashion, really, as a character. Um, I hate they it. keep changing his look. And to me, if you want to keep a character consistent, you really need to keep his look consistent. But they keep changing it up. So it's really difficult to get excited about that. So, Eli, if you're listening, like we don't like his haircut. So... I mean, if you don't like his haircut either, then we're on the same terms as that. Um, he, he wants us to talk about the quest. <laughs> the quest about the orc cleaning poo and then goes and washes his hands. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember that one. That's got to be a horde quest. Uh, <laughs> sounds like a horde quest. It really does. Speed because he's asking, and I think it might be one that he went through on Elida on Proudmore. Um, the quest with the, okay. the ogre who dances. Uh I'm not hoard either, so we're going to have to investigate that further. That's so funny. He He's hilarious, even when he's not involved with podcast <laughs> directly. He still is hilarious. Um, he wanted me to let you guys know that a small part of his soul dies when he replaces a piece of heroic Warforged. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that the truth? I, really, uh, I lose a little piece of, of my last two years he, that I've given up. There's tears going the down to light his face every time he has to replace. Um, and Cadgar is awesome. He's stating that. And I think we already know that, and we're all in agreement. But he wants everybody to know that Cadgar um, is legitimately is legitimately awesome. Um, let's see. Uh, Shatra sucks. Uh, yeah, well, I thought it was going to be playable, but whatever. 
Shatrasaks, that's coming from the mouth of Elida. I okay. roll with friends in Shatras, so I don't have a problem with it. Uh, me and Shatras get along because I got peeps. Uh, I got a tank, I got a healer, I got uh, a mage. I got I got folks, so we don't have any problems there. Um, and uh, he hates ground mounts, so... <laughs> <laughs> There's some words yeah. from, from we got from yeah me and me, me and him gonna have words about that yeah yeah, yeah. well I will say uh, two things he gave out a, a great meme about uh about the the walking mounts he goes is this what you feel like and there's this you know penny. Uh, when you put a teddy bear, the horse moves. He goes, and he has this big old fat teddy bear on it. And he's like, don't you feel like this when horse <laughs> trader? And then uh, he he also gave out uh, news that he will be switching to Argent Dawn on Alliance. Uh, his main character will be transferred. So. He says that, but it well, I'll see that when I believe it. So I, know. I, I agree. It, yeah. well, I have two two feelings about that. One, I, I believe it when I see it. Two. Uh, Fraser could stop crying poverty when he brings like the rest of the guild right. back. Uh, we are going to wrap this up because we are a little bit over time. Guys, if you're thinking this is an unorthodox episode, it really isn't. This is really who we are and we just kind of allowed ourselves a little free reign because it's been a stressful week for most of us um, and, and we kind of needed that to break the ice because we were all fighting before the call. Nothing about podcasting or anything. It was just... Oh, I don't fight with anyone. It, it wasn't even really a fight. It's just what happens. <laughs> have, um, you have a lot of testosterone and I have testosterone also so you add that to the mix uh and that's just what you get but we love each other um this was a great episode make sure that you like our facebook most of you already do make sure that if you're listening to this on itunes can you do bell a personal favor and can you hit the five star button if you think we're worth five stars and tell me why we're worth worth five stars whatever means that you are using to listen to this whether it's itunes uh stitcher on google play we're everywhere as far as where you can listen Give us a review. Give us a like. Tell us that we're doing something right. We have the downloads. We're getting 3,000 downloads a month. I know you guys are listening. I just would like some feedback. <laughs> uh, thank you for joining us, guys. Thank you for being here with me. Uh, this was a great episode. And um, the meme of the week, I've, it used to be something in play. I'm going to bring that back. I'm going to post the meme of the week right here. It is the dude from the movie with um, uh, Tom Hanks, and he's the captain of the boat, and the pirates hop on the boat, and they take the boat from him. When That's your tank dies and then goes offline in a heroic dungeon, it's the picture <laughs> of the dude that goes on the boat with the pirate, and he's like, look at me. I'm your captain now. Like, <laughs> hilarious. Yeah. It's going to be right here. Please share it. Laugh. It's not mine. I didn't make it. Somebody else made it. But it literally <laughs> made me pee my, pant pee my pants every time I see it. I'm your captain now. So uh, thank you for joining us, and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye. There's a lot of fingers in my face. No. <laughs> Wait. Hey, I was, I was going to mention like him that I watched the whole <laughs> Wait, this means over. Nice. Oh, are we not? Are we still recording? No, we're still recording. <laughs> oh, we are. My bad.